left hand. Yep. So the nice thing is the same guy that has done all the wood, the woodworker shop up in Michigan, they, uh, that's the name of it, the woodworker shop. They made all of our door frames, they prepped them, so all I gotta do is assemble them. I'm just trying to figure out which one goes where. So this is a left hand, so I'm just, the left hand's a 36, so I just wanna make sure I use all the right pieces in the right places. Okay, that's all the side casings for all my doors. Now I can cut the individual tops, which are varying widths. I feel like I've been just doing nothing but processing wood, um, cutting, prepping, but I think I'm almost to the point where everything is gonna be cut and I'm gonna be able to start doing some installation, which is awesome. But first I gotta get all these, uh, these walk door casings. I'm gonna go ahead and Craig jig them and install them, get them glued up and prepped, that way they're ready to go. And then I'm gonna go start, I think, putting together some more window boxes. So, pretty exciting. So Rob, how many BTUs is the uh, the boiler? 125,000. And is that what, like is that oversized for this size, or is that exact? Like, how do you guys do that? Um, it's probably pretty close. And that's doing domestic hot water and everything. Yeah, this thing, if it's heating, but you want to take a shower, it shuts the heating off. You know, obviously you're not gonna be in the shower that long. Yeah. The heating, the water, the hot water has so. Okay, okay, that's kind of cool. I did not know that. And hmm. you typically don't want to oversize them. They they're not as efficient. They don't work quite Sure, it's like putting way too big of a furnace that barely yes. runs. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes it's better to have it run more than not. Yeah, that's right. I mean, it, it sounds stupid, but it only saves you money when it's running. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's when it's efficient. And the longer it runs, you know, typically... The, um, yeah, that's, that's one thing that I know, like... Air conditioners, a lot of times, they'll look at the square footage and go one bigger for some reason. I don't know. Everybody's always like, oh, go one bigger on an air conditioner. Is that right or no? No, because then it, the, because what you want to do with air conditioning is take humidity out of there. If you size it too big, it cools the air down, but never, but, it's, oh. but it doesn't get the humidity out. You know, oh. it turns into a comfort. Everybody wants it not to run, but yeah. they want to be comfortable. But in order for it to work right, it needs to run. Okay. To get the humidity out. That makes pretty you know? good sense. So, huh. yeah. Well, I just learned something. Uh, and it's the same as all the new furnaces. You know, they reach their efficiency once they run, you know, maybe five minutes or, you know what I mean? Okay. At a certain point, they reach where they're getting the maximum efficiency out of Okay. So, it, so when yeah. we're out there, I thought that this boiler was running more than it needed to because it, like, didn't seem... Actually, you know what we found out was the uh, flute of the chimney was wide open. Oh, really? So, yeah. And we went over to the other work, door, and that's so. a 14 inch hole. That air is just going right out there. Right, yeah. 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 And as soon as we shut that off, I swear, I swear it ran way less. R probably did, because hmm. it was, you know, it, when you open the door, it'd bring air in yeah. and up the chimney. You know, well, I mean, you no knobs. Yeah, no knobs were on, or you could hear the wind just going <laughs> sucking right up that right, chimney. Yeah. yeah. Huh. Greg, I'm working here, dude. I still have, ooh, sliver. I still have one of these big windows to cut up and assemble. However, when I was doing my measurements, I think I said it, I was a little bit off on my box depth. So everything was six and five sixteenths, but there was one of those corners was six and uh, like three sixteenths. And another corner on one of these big boxes was like six and three eighths. So I'm not sure if there's just a little bit of issue with the framing lumber, if the window isn't set all the way in on the opening, I'm not sure. So I'll have to do a little bit of custom uh, work, I guess. I'll probably just use the track saw and make sure it's exactly, it might just be a little 
cocked on the box, but you're never gonna see an eighth of an inch. So, Greg, I'm ready, my guy. All right, sounds good, love you, bye. Well, after a couple long days of doing things like making all these windows up, doors up, and just overall cutting a lot of trim material between the windows doors, Greg has been doing base trim, got a lot of stuff prepped. I built the, the actual walk doors or in the bathrooms and the mud room and just a lot of prep work. I do believe that the next time we come back here, because today's Friday, we're gonna leave for the day. But when we get back here, we've got a lot of material to install. And that is when it's gonna really, really start taking shape. I'm hoping the handrails show up from the uh, stainer. So they're, they're not stained, but he is gonna put a finish on them. And we can finish the handrails upstairs, the staircase rails, and uh, hang the rest of the door. So if you're interested in seeing how we do the handrails, how we hang our doors, um, and just overall finish out with the trims, stay tuned and we might just roll right into that. Here we go. So it's time to start installing doors and I had to start by uh, assembling the jams. So these jams came knocked down, um, the doors, the hardware, everything is a piece that I have to put together which is super easy because the woodworker shop if up in Michigan, the same people that did all the pine, the stairs, the rails, they also manufacture the doors for us and everything is just perfect. The biggest problem was that I'm not perfect. I made a mistake and that mistake was this door opening. This was supposed to be, uh, and I just grabbed the wrong jam also, so I'm gonna roll. But anyway, this jam was supposed to be a 32 inch door and um, I framed it, finished it as a 36 inch door. So when I went to go put the doors together, opened up the packaging, I was like, wait, what is this 32 inch door for? I thought they were all 36s. And then I realized my mistake. So I had Greg remove all of the pine that we already installed. We furred out the wall, put new pine back. You're never gonna know that it was a mistake other than the fact that I just told you. So I'm gonna go put this door frame back and grab the 32 and we'll go ahead and install it. All right, we're back and we got the correct jam. I went ahead and I glued and screwed these together. Let them set up overnight so they're nice and solid. And what I'll do is I'll get this set in here. Now the other thing I did was had these custom made at uh, five and I think five and a sixteenth. That was the dimension with three quarter on each side was five inches but I always add a sixteenth to make sure that you uh, you'd rather be a, a hair big than small on something like this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna set this, I'm gonna rough set this in the opening, and then I like to just take a, a little level that I can confirm if it's level or not. See, this doorway tells me, this is telling me that this side needs to go up just a hair, about an eighth of an inch, or this side's gonna have to come down an eighth of an inch. Now, I don't want that eighth of an inch gap, so I'm actually gonna go ahead and cut this jam down just an eighth of an inch. All right, so when installing a door, that's the first thing that I always try to make sure. You want everything to be level and plumb and square, but we're gonna start with making sure that this jam set, when it sits in the opening, that it's level. And I did already assemble the hinges, put them on. They're just some cheap hinges. I'm sure we will replace them. All right, so now that we're level, this is where this is gonna go. Uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is make sure, I always start on my hinge side. So I'm gonna take my 70, yeah, this is my 78 inch, which is perfect for doing doors. And I'm just gonna push it tight against this jam. So I know there's a lot of different ways to do things, but I like to push it tight because the better connection I can have on one side, especially where my hinges are, I feel like that is gonna be a stronger door than having it shimmed off and having fasteners you know, the depth of a fastener being wasted in the shim. So if I push this thing all the way tight against this jam, just as it sits, it's perfectly plumb. So it's right where I'm gonna want it. That's how I do it. I know some people wanna put a shim there. I'm not gonna put a shim there. I'm gonna literally, uh, where it's touching my jam, like the actual frame, the rough frame, I'm gonna put a 15 gauge nail temporarily right where the hinges right in the middle. And I'm gonna put my hearing protection on because that's loud. And I'm gonna grab my eye protection. 
Now, I'm sure there's people out there that are like, oh man, you gotta shim that jam. And you know what? You can shim it if you want to, uh, but just putting a 15 gauge nail in, this is just temporary because what I can do is as I install this, I can actually take shims in from both sides, push them in, it'll wedge that 15 gauge out, and then I can put more nails in as I go. So this is just a temporary hold uh, to make sure that things are good. And I can already tell that it, it did suck it in just slightly here when I put that nail in, which is okay because now I can take, a, take two shims right above that nail. I just go slightly above it. And boom, I just snugged that right up to my level. I could go maybe a hair more. You see what I did there? It's just hard to hold a loose jam with the shims. You could, you could uh, put your shims on and level, or sorry, plumb, I guess, the shims up before you even put the door in. But I just think there's no substitute for the actual product. So I just throw ahead, I go ahead and throw the actual jam in here, and then I use the shims. Okay, so that is looking really good from top to bottom. There is a bow in on this hinge. So what I'm gonna do is get my bottom right where I like it. That is pretty darn good. We're also gonna make sure that we're sitting good on inside and outside. And that we are plumb going this way which obviously a lot of this will have to do with how your wall is, and I'm perfect. I did use a laser to frame all these walls. And I'm gonna line this right up with the hinge so I have a good fastener right on the hinge. Now we just have to bring this middle out. Oh, got lucky on that one. Now, like I said, these are 15 gauge nails. Um, I could use some screws, but this is all just a temporary hold to make sure um, that I like everything. Now this here looks like I could, I got a little bit of a any right down here. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and do one more set of shims right where that spot is to try to take it out. And that's looking good. Now the reason you want this thing to be plumbed up is that when you open the door, you don't want a ghost door, you don't want it to open or close on its own, you want it to be perfectly plumb so that it just stays where you leave it. All right, now the next thing we're gonna do, or I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna go ahead and set my door on it. I'm not even gonna mess with this side at the moment. So for hanging the door by yourself, you just gotta get a little creative. It's, uh, it's not that big of a deal. I'm going to uh, just use some lumber to kind of set it on and bring it up to height, and then I'll throw some shims on it after that, and that will help get me uh, right about where I want to be. Make sure my hinges aren't going to be in my way. Huh. Is that going to stay? Because my bag of screws is about three feet that way. I don't want that to fall on me. But I think it's going to stay. You know, I did a, a review of, or at least some sort of a video, I do believe, of this Milwaukee installation driver. And it's a great little tool, man. It's a 12 volt, or it's an M12. So it's a lot smaller than normal. And just the way it operates, it's great. And specifically for tasks like this, I don't want an impact drill. I don't want it to impact in because you, you risk potentially stripping out a fastener a lot easier with an impact than uh, and when, I'm, when I say strip out, I don't mean the actual head because uh, it seems that impacts are usually a lot better at not stripping the heads, but actually stripping out the wood material. So you can set the clutch on this so that it just goes in and snugs it tight and it doesn't over tighten it. But anyway, now we have, um, now we have this done. I'll go ahead, get that piece of wood out of there. And I'm just gonna kind of bring it closed temporarily knowing that it's not perfect yet. Now what I'm gonna do is the same sort of thing. I'm gonna start shimming up this uh, strike side where it strikes the latch. So what I like to do 
is I like to take one shim, okay? And it doesn't matter what shim it is, but up at the top, right? This is the actual frame of the door. You're not gonna change that. That's the dimension and the reveal of uh, on the sides. So over here, I'm kind of stuck with this reveal. It's about the thickness of this shim. I'm gonna take the same shim and I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna put it up at the top. So up at the top, I can't change this dimension short of cutting down my frame and uh, redoing it, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna go ahead and run my shim in. I'm gonna mark where it feels snug and then I'm gonna run down this whole jam making sure that I have the exact same uh, reveal going down the rest of the door. All right, I like that. And that's kind of the basic install of the frame. I can make sure that my reveals are all consistent. And any discrepancies between those reveals, now is my time to adjust them with shims. Everything is where it's gonna be. I'm gonna go ahead and assemble my casing, which I've actually already done, pre-assembled it, and I'm gonna install that. That's going to lock this jam in even more without having to over frame here. Now I will go ahead and probably put some screws right here, but I'm gonna make sure everything is good before I do that. So what I'm doing is we've got screws in the jam around the perimeter and what those screws are doing, and I'll show you a little closer, those screws are going to secure the side of our box so that we can make sure that it stays perfect where we want it versus nailing flat to the wall. And these screws we can push in and out to make sure that they're exactly where the edge of the window is. So when the box goes in and we nail the jam extensions to the frame of the window box, it doesn't suck in and get all, you know, I guess wavy. It'll be held nice and tight. So I'm just adjusting those in and out to exactly where we want them. See how that went in there nice and snug? So that's secured now by those screws. And when I nail and fasten in my box, it should be nice and secure. Also, I better put my ice tunes in because that is pretty loud. So I got these pre-made uh, window boxes with casing already installed, but how do I get it to be perfectly squared up and lined up with the window? Let me show you. So what I'm gonna do is I built these window boxes to be flush with the outside edge of this window. So to get that to line up perfectly, what I'm gonna do is take some screws and I'm gonna screw right through the window frame and I'm gonna line them up so that the heads are in line in a plane with the outside edge of that window. I'm gonna go around the perimeter doing that. Basically, depending on the window size here, I'm gonna do three along each side. All right, so now that I've got those screws, maybe it makes sense instead of using a shim that you can't adjust after you put this box in since it covers everything up or pre-assembling all the shims and getting them perfect. Uh, this is way easier. You set the screws into the depth that you want 
use the head of the screw like a shim. And I don't know if this is gonna go in on the first try. Sometimes I gotta adjust some screw heads. And it's okay if it's a little bit tight. Feels like this. No, that one's good. That one's good. Look at that. You can see the reveal. It's gonna be nice and clean if you do the job right all the way around. It's important though, you have to do a couple different steps before you even get to this point. Your windows have to be installed perfectly level, plumb, and square. You have to cut your boxes to the exact dimension of the outside of the window frame. And you have to make sure that when you install your casing, that your 45s are perfect and that everything is square so that when it goes in, it's exactly like it should be. And you're never gonna be able to install trim as cleanly and efficiently one piece at a time. By doing it as a unit, it's stronger, it's glued and screwed together with those Craig jigs, and now it's perfect. And those, those screw heads are providing support underneath this window, so when I fasten it in, it's not gonna go anywhere. So hopefully that helped. It'll be a little tight. Okay, oh yeah, look at that. All right, now go up as high as you can on your side. You start pushing it in. You, you, got, you gotta get up, up with me, there you go. Keep going in, you're, you're behind me, there you go. Yeah, uh-huh. Okay. How did it go? Huh, not too shabby. That is workable. That actually fits in there. Look at that, the glue just comes right off. That actually fits in there really nice, dude. All right, cool. Cool, cool. Good work, buddy. Nice thing about having all this wood siding is you don't really have to worry about hitting a stud. You're gonna get solid wood no matter what. Nice thing is if you look close enough, that's kind of a good and a bad thing, I suppose. But if you look close enough in some of these cracks, you can see where we gun nailed the piece on, which tells us right where the stud is. So good and bad, obviously, because 
you can see that little thing, but you gotta look close. It's not like they're blatantly obvious. Cool, this room is done, trim, and uh, ready to be cleaned up. Now that is what I'm talking about. Oh my gosh, I did 45. Why, why did I do that? All right, to finish the last piece of base trim up here on the mezzanine, what I've got is a uh, it's like a nosing, I guess. And this was supplied to us to use to cap off the top of this floor where it transitions to the edge of the mezzanine. And I'm worried about it staying down, but I'm, I'm, assured, by, uh, I'm assured by the uh, supplier that with the proper sealant, which they told me what to buy, I've got it somewhere. If I seal that to this floor, once that cures, it's not going anywhere. So we're gonna go ahead and give it a try give it a nice clean look. But before I put this on, I'm gonna finish the last piece of base trim, but I need to know where this is gonna be so that I can measure it. 37 and a quarter. All right. And since this piece comes to the edge and uh, you're gonna be able to see the edge of it, I'm gonna go ahead and put a double 45 on it to bring it around so that it returns back to the wall. What we decided to do was run this nosing all the way to the wall, notch out my base, so that's gonna actually sit right on top of that nosing. And then I'm gonna cut this little 45 return that's gonna sit in here just to kind of wrap around the grain. And the reason I gotta do that, it's not really just for the aesthetic of, you know, wrapping my trim, but you see how these base have this, uh, I think you'd call that like a dado out of the back. If you just run it straight, you're gonna see that little um, gap. So I have to do something to close it up I'll just do a nice little 45 return and that'll clean it up real nice. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this. Uh, I gotta cut it down just a little bit for this thickness that I notched out of this board. And then I'll go ahead and glue it up. This time I'll use some quick and thick. Really because this, um, this doesn't require as much pressure or clamping pressure to get it to stick or bond. So I should be able to hold it for a little bit and then it, it should stay pretty good and uh, secure. So since I uh, can't really nail this piece here, uh, what I've done is just, I glued it quick and thick, it's gonna be nice. And then I put some painter's tape just to hold this in nice and tight. And that'll allow that to cure. But the end result will be something like that. That's where that's gonna go, that's gonna go. And then this guy, it's gonna just slide right underneath there. So I didn't want it to be super, super tight, but obviously I want it to look nice and clean and this is gonna get fastened now. What we've got is some Power Grab Ultimate. And honestly, this is what they told me to use with this product. Um, it was one of the most expensive caulks at the hardware store where I got it. It was like nine bucks a tube or 10 bucks or something. So hopefully it's good. All right, so we're approaching the end of the day and my goal was to get all the trim done so that I could start working on the railing. I've got a little bit of time left today and what I wanna do is just start figuring out how I'm gonna do this railing. And I say that because I don't know exactly how I'm going to do it. I know the overall look that we're after and I got the pieces to the puzzle, but still gotta figure out what I'm gonna do. So I cut this first piece 
and I cut it tight because this post was leaning in just ever so slightly. And I'm using my uh, LDM, my laser distance measurer, to really accurately get the dimensions for these columns. So you don't get more accurate than one of these things. It's up to, I do believe a 32nd and it's always spot on. So that's what I like to use, in, especially in something like this, that you've got to measure between two things. Now the top is not too hard because you can, you know, pull your tape out, stick it into the one side and go across the top and get a pretty accurate, and get a pretty accurate measurement. But especially when you're coming down here and you're looking for this dimension, it's just as easy as boom, six foot five and a quarter. And uh, I'm gonna try to lay things out and see how this goes. And tomorrow we're gonna go ahead and start building these rails. So we're gonna get out of here today. Uh, that's, that basically wraps up all the trim work. So we'll finish this thing up with handrails, stone, and maybe a couple other punch list items.